Okay. I'm going to call the uh, meeting of the Town Finance Committee of Tuesday, March 5th to order, and it's eight minutes after the hour of two. And uh, to, I think the first thing we need to do is talk about minutes, not, for, um, not that we have minutes to approve, but we have to make sure we have somebody who's going to take notes today's meeting, and we um, need to have a brief discussion about what our expectations are for contents of minutes and mm -hmm. whether we have any ideas of assistance that we might receive um, so that we can uh, make the minute taking easier, but today we do need a volunteer. Well, we're, I think we're at full cycle, so I started and I'll okay. today. Okay, thank you. So. Uh, I had uh, been in communica communication with Dorothy, who was um, the taker of minutes at our last meeting, and uh, sent her a copy of the regulation from the Attorney General about open meeting law and the requirements of minutes. And uh, it's a summary, it's not a transcript of discussion uh, that's basically required. And, so I was uh, pointing out that the taker of the minutes uh, should feel free to exercise judgment on what that means, uh, that the important things are that we hit the, the, all of the requirement points about people present, actions taken, and any votes um, that we may take get recorded. Um, so those, what's in, in the absolute requirements has to be done. Uh, and uh, uh, so I think it's, we're all trying to just figure it out as far as the um, extent of the actual summary of the um, discussion to take place. So I don't know if anybody has any comments or um, things that they want to say on the subject or if we just leave it with each uh, person taking minutes. I have a question. Your report was really quite good, but I don't see you taking notes. How did you do that? I did take notes on key points that I wanted to cover in the report, and uh, when, uh, so I, 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 some of it I just do it quickly after a meeting so that it's fresh in my mind and I use basic notes um, which correspond to the agenda for the most part. And uh, I did have a little bit of additional note. We had one public comment, and I did take notes on the public comment and wrote that up separately so that the one public comment, I could send you my write-up on that if you haven't already done it. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it, it, we do have written reports when we can, and. I tried to do it because I thought it was an important meeting to get summarized. Anything else? Um, so the, the question was whether we could find somebody, um, one of our other committees <coughs> talked about, it was mentioned last night, um, asking uh, somebody who's uh, uh, in the senior volunteer program or other volunteers to, who would be interested in doing that um, we have to make sure that we're comfortable with their um, doing it. So I guess that's the key thing. At, at least speaking for myself, um, I didn't, I haven't found it hard to do the minutes because um, I kind of take them by the agenda item. You know, so it's not trying to do a verbatim. And I think one of the benefits that we're now capturing this on film is there's a video record of all the specifics. So if we can capture the essence of the discussion, it doesn't have to be everyone who said what. Um, and then if there's a member of the public, identify who that is and what they did. But it's you know, going, this was the topic, this was the topic, and a brief summary. And I've been looking across other committees and what what we're doing, but also what the planning board does, and those are the minutes I find the most useful. I mean, they capture a sense of what the discussion was, not uh, verbatim. 
So, um, why don't Kathy, and who's been sort of working closely to keep track of the minutes and what gets recorded, and I work together, see if we can uh, work with our um, community participation officers and see if we can find a solution in the meantime. Uh, keep going with other things. Um, so the first numbered agenda item, I wanted to um, really turn this over a little bit to um, Lynn and to Paul, which is preview of the March 7 budget forum, um, which is, of course, a requirement of the charter. It's section 5.3. I was rereading it this morning. And what it says is only a couple sentences, <clears throat> not later than March 15th, but before the town manager submits a proposed budget to the town council, the president of the town council with the cooperation of the town manager shall call at least one public forum on the topic of the proposed budget. The forum is intended for the town council and the town manager to present priorities context based on prior year's budgets, revenue and expenditure forecasts and other relevant information and to solicit feedback from the public. Um, there's another provision in the charter which I'm not gonna bother to look for and read that talks about public forums and requiring that at least, uh, it was at half the time be devoted to um, hearing from the public. Uh, and it seems that the interpretation is that this hearing falls into that category. And um, I assume that that's because it mentions budget, our financial, two, two hearings minimum, one on finance and one on, or, yeah, Paul. So there, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, there are two animals. There's the public forum animal and the public hearing. Uh, there are public forums required. Uh, this is one of the public forums that are re that's required. The school committee, I believe, is required to hold a public forum as well. Um, so this falls into the former category. You, the finance committee, will also hold a public hearing um, right. uh, on the budget, both for the regional school district, which was just voted last night by the town council, by the town council, and then your the normal budget, um, that does not have the requirement that half the time be reserved for public comment. Only the public forum does. And that's because of the participation section of the uh, charter, not the budget section of the charter. Is that? Yes. Because uh, what strikes me is, is that uh, in this now, I'll turn this over to uh, you for your thoughts about this and what feedback you're looking for the committee about today. But to uh, do what is required in the second sentence takes time. And you can't, you know, how do we monitor that time when it's, uh, we, we want to hear from the public, we certainly are not going to cut off hearing from the public, but there's no way we can be assured once we start a presentation, no matter how long it takes, that there will be speakers there to speak for that, at least that amount of time. And my feedback, My observation is basically we sit there until the time has expired, which sounds tedious, but I don't think we have a choice. Um, I agree because somebody might think I'll come after school, I'll come by, it's still open, and they will come in uh, near the end ready to talk and we have to be ready to listen. It, it, th this particular event's at 6.30 at night, but for example, the school committee, as it turns out, is meeting at six o'clock that night at the high school. Somebody could come over after that meeting. Yeah. So I think we sit there, whether we have an audience or not. 
and basically we shouldn't talk because the more we talk, the more we sit there. Oh, so bring a book. But it, I yeah. don't but know it, what else to say, but the minute we start talking or deliberating or asking questions mm -hmm. or debating, we've added time to the agenda. Right? I, I think that's right, but there is a presentation by the town manager, and presumably when whoever shows up from public will have at least a few, you know, what I'm reading is priorities, you know, revenue and expenditure forecast, so they'll have a context that they can be giving feedback to. Yeah, we, we'll get yeah. to the presentation issue. No, I, mean, I, I think the but issue... I, I think you're right, Lynn, that it's not us, it's, yeah. it's whoever comes, right? Yes. The, we can talk between Paul and my and Sonia and myself. We could talk for five minutes. We could talk for an hour. If we talk for five minutes, we have to stay for five minutes, which is pretty rude. If we talk for an hour, we have to stay for an hour and listen to public comment. That's the way it works. Okay. So, uh, with that context, I think that what we're really trying to do, if I um, understand your purpose today is to get our feedback on what should be presented. Yes, yeah, so I look at this as not a necessarily a public hearing, uh, but more akin to, I think the, the charter anticipated this to be a public forum. They built in a 50% listening component purposely so that the decision makers would be hearing from the audience, not talking at the audience. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, uh, it's been educational to go to some of the uh, uh, listening sessions the school has put on because that's been a very listening environment. Uh, there's a 15 minute maybe mm -hmm. at the beginning presentation and then it's all small groups and listening. And in fact, I was saying I haven't talked with the president about this yet. Next year we might want to think about it doing it a different way where we are a more organized format like the schools did with listen, like small groups where everyone's voice gets heard. It, it might be more interactive and more engaging. Um, for this one, because it's the first one, I think we're going to do it pretty straightforward, uh, try to follow the charter as best we can. Um, and so it, that's how I'm approaching it, that this is really a time for us to listen, uh, give some basic information, but really uh, to listen. And this comes, this is not a thing that we have done in the past. It's a new requirement of the charter. Previously, previously the charter would have a, we would do a financial indicators report in October, and that was where the finance team would present where we are in terms of a community. Then the finance committee and the select board would take that information and then present uh, priorities from their perspective. Um, and present those to the town manager. The town manager would then go and build the budget, come back in January, present the budget to the, um, to the select board and the finance committee, and then the, they would go along and do their process. This puts a, a new meeting in there um, so that, that says, wait a minute, there's no piece in there that says, well, what does the public want as a priority? And so that's, this sticks in a new meeting, a public forum, to really serve as a list listening device for the decision makers. Uh, and I think that the, those steps next year will still happen. We'll do our financial indicators in the fall. Uh, the town council and finance committee will establish priorities. Um, then we'll do one of these forums to hear from the public and then we'll go build our budget. And I think that the, 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 the thing they were trying to address is by the time the budget is presented and you hold a public hearing, it's pretty much done. So wh why can't we get involved earlier? And I think that's the pur purpose of this listening set. I think of it more as a listening session than a public forum. So, um, so I think, so that's how I've been thinking about this and Sonia and Anthony and I've been working on a presentation that talks a little bit about the purpose of the, um, of the session. Talk about how priorities are set in terms of um, what, what material I have in front of me today, i.e. the finance committee memo and the uh, select board memo that I work from in terms of what are we trying to address in this upcoming budget. Recognize that municipal budgets don't change very much. Um, they really, our whole mission at this point is to um, 
keep the services that we're providing still to, and continue to provide them. Um, and then identify some of the priorities that I have heard and that has been articulated, such as sustainability and resiliency, roads, sidewalks, crosswalks, um, you know, age-friendly communities, planning for the future. I haven't really set, settled on all the terms we're going to put um, forward. And the, a big, the big infrastructure projects. So we're sort of laying out what the, put up front what, what I see as being the, the top priorities from the community and open to hearing from others. Then we go into talking about where, uh, sort of a revenue, um, how, how our, our, where our revenue comes from so people get a sense of what the constraints are on building a budget and talk about expenditures and again, talk about the sort of fixed pieces of the budget that, uh, um, that we just can't move around that don't allow us to do a whole lot of changes to it. Um, and then talk about where we are in terms of um, FY19 and in terms of how we're doing so far this year. Um, we're, we're forecasting to go uh, in FY20. Um, I'm, I'm summarizing these really quickly. Um, what are, what's new on the horizon that we do know or, um, or either know or don't know or, or um, know are coming but don't know much about them. So what we know is our health insurance increase, for instance. What we um, don't know, uh, we know, we know that there are new um, revenue sources that potentially would come into the town like Airbnb and marijuana, but we don't know much about how much they're gonna come. So we're not building those into the budget, but we know that they're out there. Um, and we know that we have union contracts that are unsettled, things like that. I would identify all the things that are out there that um, sort of status report on where we are. And then we'd go into um, going where we are in terms of the budget time frame, um, talk a little bit about the time schedule so people know where else they can plug into as the, time, as the budget gets developed, um, and then try to leave that open, as much time as available to, for public comment. I don't see this as being a, the, normally we do the financial indicators report and it's about a 40 minute presentation. That's not what this is. It's not the budget presentation, which is again about a 30 minute presentation. I don't think that's what this is. It's sort of something in between that. And so I don't think it is a super long presentation, um, but I'm sort of eyeballing this and trying to see, see what you, where you think would be beneficial to the public to help them um, make comments to us that would be informative to the council and to the manager. Can you, so let me just, I started, to, I didn't start recording what you were saying fast enough. You would, I'm sorry, you would start with the financial indicators or guidelines? Yes, the guidelines that have already been developed by the uh, finance committee and the select. Right, but abbreviated. Well, those are each of those are very long documents, so I would just sort of identify them and highlight what the key points from each of them is. Separate document on an indicator, separate document on guidelines. They're both guidelines, one from okay. the finance committee, one from the select board. Okay. Are you going to have copies of those available? They, we can. Will we post copies so that they're available? Maybe we post them but not have them handed out? Sure. I think posting is probably better. Um, I think we have, they've been online on the budget page forever. So yeah, we could but do But post them as part of this meeting? Sure. Oh, absolutely. If we refer okay. them, we should. So it's financial guidelines and? The financial guidelines from the finance committee and from the select board. And I also have my um, goals, the town manager goals from the select board that I referenced as well. Okay, so you wanna quickly go over your list again? Sure. Those were the three. Financial guidelines. Guidelines from the finance committee, guidelines from the select board, and then town manager goals. I just, Paul, Go ahead. The, the other one I heard you say when you went through your outline is you've got a, um, 
where we are right now, an update on current fiscal year and forecast, the best forecast we've got right now for FY20. Um, you know, so we, we saw those, but they were still November, you know, where we are. So one of the things that I m think might be helpful off those two documents, if when you present, is um, I mentioned this to you the other day. What I'm realizing is that people don't understand how many things have to draw on the slice called capital budgets, that that's where roads are, that's where a roof is, that's, you know, just, you know, somehow saying, you know, when you were talking about what are our constraints, you know, this, everything, a whole, types of things that draw on that so you understand that it's the other things are operating. It's been useful when I draw people to that understanding that every $150,000 actually matters, <laughs> you know. Um, so do you see yourself separating the discussion as to operating versus capital? I think we need to. I think we want to talk about the overall financial situation of the town, the, the operating budget, which, again, I don't know if there, there might be people coming in with, with initiatives. Um, well, you heard some last night for um, transportation uh, or human services or community services, things like that. I would assume we would, we would hear from people who have those interests uh, in mind. Um, you could have people come in saying, I want more, I think you should give more money to the schools and things like that, whatever it is, more money to police, more money to fire, whatever it is. Um, so I think we should, we, our, our mission that night is to listen and take it back to with us, not to respond to everything. There was a request from Amherst Media that we not forget our microphones. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Yes, go ahead. Yeah, what would be helpful for, I think, me and everyone else would also to get the breakups of, uh, you know, we have these broad categories of operational, but, you know, what are the main categories of expenses, but where are they going? Because that would allow us to see versus last year, you know, like this extra resources, services, or, you know, where, do, where can we find those categories? the categories in terms of like public safety, that category, yeah. public safety, education. But within that, you know, like uh, specific allocations being made, whether, you know, the, uh, so we have the broad categories right now, but could we see the breakup within that where the money is going to the different? So under public safety, how much is going to police, how much is going to fire? You want to get a little more detailed is what you're asking? Yeah. I mean, that's where you really do need to look at the FY19 town manager's budget okay. um, because that's where the breakout occurs. And I think that what we want to do it, um, over the next couple of meetings is to find um, a place where we can um, really work on one or two sections so that how to read the budget. Um, if there are questions that come up about how do I read that budget, what does this mean, or we just want to walk through a section, we do that. Yes. Um, Andy, if you could divide it up. Um, I would be much, would prefer if I would study before we do each section. And because we're talking about from the big book, right? Yes. Yes, okay. So if you would indicate what sections that we're gonna talk at which session, which meeting, then I would make sure to read that before we come to that meeting and discuss it. And I think that it would be certainly more understandable that way. Yeah, um, we will be talking about the future schedule in a moment. And so we're gonna jump or this is jumping around a little bit, but with this smaller group, I don't mind jumping around. Um, because we talk about um, one of the things that is on here is review the finance committee meeting schedule and work plan. I'm kind of leaving that on as a placeholder so we can always talk about our schedule. Um, one thing that we do know about is that next week, uh, Mr. Mangano is going to come back and make an additional presentation um, about um, aspects of the capital um, 
budget that we had previously discussed, both the major building and the um, school building questions that we had posed. And uh, so um, that is now planned for next week. So I think that uh, that will probably take up a um, significant portion of our allotted time and we probably will need to limit the amount of time we spend on the budget. We will do a lot more of the 19 budget on the 26th, uh, which will um, Yeah, I guess. The 26th is when we're going to do the Reacher School District budget. Yeah, no, the, the 19th I meant, I guess so that's correct. Uh, you're correct, 26th we're doing the Reacher. So um, we'll have to figure this out, but if there are sections of the budget, departments that particularly interest you, um, it really doesn't matter because we really just need to um, get you to look at one of you know the sections that are appropriate as is indicated, and then uh, be prepared um, for Sonia to go into them in more detail. Uh, so, if you have any um, departments or functional areas that you're particularly interested in, <coughs> this is a good time to suggest it. <coughs> Andy. So, so I think we sort of mapped it out as being like a, a public works, public safety, the, the sort of functional areas that we have and sequentially go through them as, in as much detail as the Finance Committee would like us to so you can understand more uh, in details about how those bud what's in those budgets and why they look the way they do. Yeah. And if, if um, Sonia after this meeting can just show me where to find the document that you for current year that you've been working on, I can put, I, we've got this section in SharePoint called reference materials. So to the extent people, you know, I know we, when we, pre-inauguration, we got the super thick document in, in our folders. So we have a print document too, but just people know. We also, yeah. we also got the thumb drive. Yeah. Right, well, yeah. Right, it's on the thumb drives. You know, so I'm just, just that people should know that they have some of this material that just might not remember where it was and when they got it. Yeah. I, I just found it on the so, website. It's the financial, so, yeah. the town budget, yeah. So I, I just want to suggest that every, everybody check out the accounting website. There's a lot of information there too. There's the quarterly reports that we used to do in the past and I'm still doing them and posting them on the website. So if you want to see what's happening right now, where we're at at certain points, that's where you would look, and that will show you the allocations to all the different departments individually within the functional areas. So um, I think that's a good start, good summary. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the other place to look is obviously, and this is uh, for anybody who's watching this meeting at home too, on the website, um, under the first tab for as you go to the um, home page of the town website at amherstma.gov, under government there's a section called budget and for each year um, you'll see then listed below the budget documents for that year so that you can go back and find prior year's budget documents and uh, for the purposes of the current year, it's FY19, the year we're working in right now, as we develop the budget for FY20. Um, so the FY19 one is populated with things like the uh, budget that we'll be talking about, which is um, for sort of laying the groundwork purposes, the FY20 budget won't be presented to us until May 1st. Yes. So I did find it on the website, and I just Googled it, find town manager's budget, financial year, and it came up. But so I guess my question was, um, in terms of the public forum, to what extent do we want to give details? Like, exactly that under community services, you know, this is what we did last year, and this is what we're doing this year. So are we going to that extent? to that ex detail extent so that people know where we shift, if there's any shift in priorities or what we, 
or is it going to be just major categories, public works, community services? You know what I mean? So I think that will come when I present your budget, but I think the purpose of this meeting on the, on the 12th um, is, or whatever, the, what a Thursday, 7th, um, is to listen first before saying, here's what we're doing next year, because we are, don't want to put out what we're doing next year until we've heard feedback from people. And so we'll have that, I don't think, it would make, I think when I make the budget presentation, that level of detail is appropriate, but at this forum, I think it's more for us to be hearing from the public in terms of what, where should our priorities, or do we have our priorities misaligned in terms of what you, your expectations are? So, um, as you look at your presentation, it's kind of setting the context for how people think about the budget. It's, here's the guidance I'm given, here's, you know, the budget we're working on right now, here's the operating side of it, here's the capital side of it. Okay. I am going to suggest that um, I pick up and do the budget time frame and schedule at the end, but then I have a question of, of seeking advice of is there a logical way to per, have people provide comments within a certain topic area. For example, um, I, I'd like to take comments first that pertain to X. Doesn't mean you won't, might, won't have an opportunity later, but in order for us to have a informative discussion, let's do X, then we'll do Y, et cetera. Is there a logical way to do that? Well, that's how town meeting did it um, when they considered the budget for approval. Right. And that might be how the council would do your budget hearing, or the finance committee would do your budget hearings, right. do it okay, sort of mimic what town meeting did. Um, I think uh, just hearing what you, uh, some of the members of the finance committee said earlier, what if someone that comes in late, they're at another meeting and they come in and they miss the opportunity? I no, think we'd still have the opportunity, but, f you know, is there anybody who needs to go back to a topic, you know? So in other words, we can give the opportunity later for people who come in, but, you know, suppose we do have 50 people in the audience, okay? My, I have, I don't have any side bets on this, but I have a theory about who's gonna show up, okay? And I think we could have 50 people in the audience, okay? We'd like to hear your thoughts about the budget as it pertains to X. Then we're going to move on, et cetera. So I need some um, refresher on how that was done in the past. So I think that's really interesting. If, you, if there are 10 people in the audience, that's one way. You, you can say, you can just ask each one of them what they think. But if you have 100 people in the audience or 200 people or 50, mm -hmm. you might need to organize that. I think that's really wise to pre-think that and probably the way to do that would be let's talk about public safety, let's talk about community services, let's talk about school, you know, education, let's talk, you know, those different major, t I'm not sure if you talk about education necessarily because they have their own public hearing system, but uh, all the things are on the town side of the ledger. Um, oh, oh, have just, and in, in again, listening to what people's concerns were. I think that might be a good way to manage it. Sort of like how we organize the budget in general, those l large categories. Okay, so I'll just go back to a former town meeting schedule and, okay. And, and when I get to the schools, I'm just gonna say, given that the schools have had their own hearing, we are not going to do the schools at this time. And what, one thing we might do in addition to that, um, if you do those big topics, you might say, and after we get through, the, you know, just give them a preview after we get through these topics, we'd love to hear anything that's specific to your neighborhoods. Uh, you know, so it goes from, you know, the big topics, and you can hold that till later if, you know, there's dead silence in the room. 
you know, but it's a way of getting very local versus very large, and it might be do the large first and then local, depending on how the flow is going. Yeah, Dorothy? I have a question. I've noticed the room was awfully full. Was it last night? Yes. So how many people can be here? How large, if you take the chairs out and everybody stands? We're at the middle, um, we're we're at the the middle, middle school. school. Well, we're at the middle school, fine. I, okay. I, this, is be, this is because I believe that the people who are most likely to come mm -hmm. are either the people who have become uh, town council watchers, okay, mm -hmm. and former town meeting people. Yes, I think it's a good idea. That's why we moved it to a larger venue. Yeah. The one thing that's important to um, at least have in reserve to remind people about um, if it doesn't get into an introductory piece is that the bottom line of the library and schools budget is something that is within your purview, but that the details of how the, what the priorities are and how that money is expended is uh, a matter that belongs to the library trustees and director and to the school committee and superintendent. And that uh, it's one of those realities of municipal budgeting that we all understand, but we need to remind people of. I always had to remind town meeting of that. Uh, just since now I'm in the town meeting frame, thinking of the middle school, would you have reports on the table? People who went in for the town meeting were used to being able to get written reports on the table. I think people would appreciate that. Uh, re what reports? So we won't. Various financial documents, but not everything up. Uh, we did not anticipate doing that just because we like trees um, mm -hmm. and we don't know how many people will yeah. be there. Um, everything is online. Anything that we would print is already online. Mm -hmm. So if there was a particular document you thought would be very beneficial to people, we'd be happy to do it. But even the, we never printed multiple copies of more than we needed of the finance committee uh, report because we gave enough to the town meeting members but didn't have a lot of extra copies for that. Um, the, I mean, I think also to Kathy's point, I think that a lot of times people, this is a public hearing, a public forum on the budget, but I think you're right. I think a lot of people think about their neighborhoods or their personal circumstance, and they would appreciate the opportunity mm -hmm. to make a statement about that. And I think it's, I mean, the President and I have not talked about this. I mean, it's, it is, you're, you're the one calling the meeting, but I think it's totally, um, if people want to talk about service levels and things like that, I think we, it's the, the, this is for many people the only opportunity they'll have to speak directly to the manager and the council about mm -hmm. this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it might be wise to say, we're happy to listen to anything you have to say on these things. And I'm not sure if you have the same thoughts on that. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things we also wanted to ask them to do, because one of the things we want to ask them to do, first of all, I, I will lay out some general guidelines, okay? Uh, but one of the things we want to ask them to do is their name, where they live, and their district, okay? Do you, do you think you're gonna want the countdown clock from town meeting? I don't think so. Other thoughts about the forum? No, I, I think it sounds great. And uh, as Paul knows, uh, Sarah and I have jumped in with trying to do a district meeting on Sunday. So we're going to do just a little, if you weren't at the meeting on Thursday, here are the big issues, and ask again, you know, be there to listen on these issues. So using some exhibits you do. So we'll have a second round that's District 1 focused. But at this, in the same way you've just described, um, be there more to listen than to be promising anything. <laughs> and I guess the only other thing that I would suggest at least be prepared to respond to a little bit is the question that we frequently get asked, which is, uh, 
I'm not so much interested in the total amount of money going into roads. I want to know what's happening to, to the sidewalk I'm interested in and how is that decision made and how can I influence that decision. And uh, I think we're hearing that a little bit through the JCPC process too. And uh, we're uh, really probably need at some point to have a firmer understanding of how that works with the Transportation Advisory Committee and what's an executive function on those kinds of decisions and what's a legislative function. It's sort of a distinction that we've never quite had to make in the way that we're making it now. And, but I think it's just from the comments I'm getting and seeing, it seems to be an issue that is there. Anything else? Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so we're not doing any printouts, and I agree with that, because we love trees. But is there part of your presentation initially, will there be anything that you're sharing that we could provide a link to people ahead of time in all our messaging that, hey, if you're interested, <coughs> look up this information before coming? I think that, th I, I want to second that, so that even an agenda that has the links right in it, that is available electronically, available in paper, and how do they get on the guest website for ARPS? Just so that they can sit there and electronically look at the budget if they want to. So you're seeing a sheet that shows the agenda, key links um, that they can find electronically, during the meeting or prior to the meeting and um, post-meeting. Yep. Okay. So, anything else on this topic? I just want to move it along and keep an eye on the time. Yes. So, when we sort of scope this out, it's not a long presentation. It's like 15 minutes or something like that, maybe 20 by the time we get through, through it. But I think that that's probably an appropriate length of time yeah. because it depends how much people want to comment on the other side. Because, I, again, I do frame this in terms of it's us sitting there listening versus us sitting there telling you what's going to happen. Are you going to do this with slides? And will you, at the end of the slide, put key dates for the schedule? Okay. And I guess the other question that you just have to sense out at the time is that if people ask questions that beg for a response, they're not um, what are you going to do, but how things work or something like that, whether to respond really needs, I would suggest uh, Madam President is, has to make a determination as to whether it seems appropriate to try and see if a response is appropriate or not. Do you think I should start with clarifying questions? I'd say, yeah, I don't know either. I, yeah, I, and the other thing is, without being sounding dictatorial nor um, trying to um, not prioritize the council, we really don't want this to be a time that council spends asking questions. We want, like the school listening sessions, we want this to be us listening. Okay. Yeah, I, I very much like, I agree, totally agree, Lynn, and I, I really like the jumping right into the 15 minute or the 12 whatever here's some information. The first time we've done it, we're here to listen to you and get as quickly to other people in the room talking as possible um, would be great, <laughs> you know, because it's the first time we've had a kind of a dialogue about this. Yeah. And I think, I think what's, why that's important is that it sends a real message to the people that you're in listening mode. And I, I was influenced by the way the superintendent and the school committee set up their listening sessions because it was designed to enable people to speak and to be heard. And um, I think that was a, a real interesting model to me. So I think that it, it, even if you didn't attend, 
you got the message that it was a listen, it was an opportunity to be heard. And I think that's that's a real important message for the council to be communicating that we're here to listen to you. And the you know, council's doing a lot of things, you know, with your district meetings and stuff to in, engage with the, the community. So I think that it builds on that narrative that you've already started to develop. Anything else on the forum? Okay. Um, next item on the list is. Uh, I put down discussion in March 2 Fort Towns meeting on regional budget. I reported on that last night and everybody was present last night so that I don't feel the need to repeat what I said. I just didn't know if there were any questions or follow-up uh, discussion that um, you were anxious to have. Um, you feel like you're okay at this point. The budget will be presented to us. So that it wasn't really about the budget yet; it was more about the assessment method, the, the um, how to get that method down, and just the fact that we had agreement amongst the four towns. Yes, Paul. So this would be for the school budget, and probably the regional school district budget, but also the town budget. I would assume. Um, I'm trying to figure out where is the time to make a budget presentation that would be in the public realm and is the public hearing is being held by the um, finance committee so is that when you would expect the budget um, presentation to be made because I think that it makes sense for the you know school superintendent um, and me to be in independently making our presentations to you on this topic I just don't know where that exactly fits in yeah we uh well, Lynn is just doing some thinking about that subject um, and because uh, we don't want to uh, ask uh, key staff from the schools to do it multiple times. Uh, I think that the first discussion we have, uh, I certainly wouldn't want to expect the superintendent to be there. He's um, going to give us the budget. We'll look at the budget, see what questions we have. But um, since there's multiple pieces that are going through here, and if we're not, if we don't ask them to come to too many meetings, um, I, I just sent in reply to Superintendent Morris's request to us. I did send the four key dates and of them identified two where I thought it was important that they have someone there. Um, this is for the general budget, for the school budget, um, not the SOI. Uh, and, but did state in the others that in the past they would have come before the finance committee prior to town meeting. Um, so it, I really leave it, left it up to them. You can see it. Yeah, I mean, usually, I mean, they would always have some pretty good presence at town meeting because it was quite um, a vote, you know. And that was when the largest number of people were there. Um, but they also came to the finance committee and did a more detailed and earlier presentation and sort of enabled the finance committee to pick, put together a report. Uh, that would go to town meeting in advance. This is a uh, little bit more of a experiment to see what works. Um, I don't think we know yet. Well, in fact, they bring the budget not to the finance committee, they bring the budget to the town manager. No, they submit the, well, they submit the budget and then they send it to the council, and the council had just voted that it automatically comes to the finance committee. This is the regional budget. Right. I'm sorry, yes. And then the regional, so the first take, I mean, the question is, who do we want to have present on our first meeting where we're getting it after it's been referred to us and we as a finance committee are looking at it? And I think that's what the first question is. And uh, 
recognizing that we really don't want to ask the superintendent to attend four different meetings, which ones are the most important ones for the superintendent to attend. That's what the discussion was about. And of course, the dates were uh, the 26th of March when the budget is presented, the April 2nd hearing, public hearing, uh, April 9 when we do our vote on the budget, and then the meeting where the um, <coughs> council is voting. So those are the four meetings. And how, how many times is it right to ask the superintendent to be there, and um, which are the most important points? Yep. So oh. my sense is that the public would expect the presenter of the budget, you know, the superintendent or me or whoever, to be at the public hearing making a formal presentation about what's in the budget and why you set those priorities and based on the information you've had at that time. So you might get it for, you might have it for one meeting that you sort of go through it, that, but that he should have on his calendar that April 2nd public hearing and then whatever the day in May is when you have the town manager budget public hearing, that that's where you, you would expect a formal presentation um, with slides, a summary, and, and the budget will be, have been out in the, in the public realm for a few weeks by then as well. And then people can you know, make, you know, ask questions or do it however they want to um, engage with that. So I would, um, gets back to the question of March 26th meeting. I don't know if uh, Mr. Mangano is intending to be here for that meeting and whether that would suffice. And uh, then the forum we know uh, the April 9th discussion, I think at that point, are there follow-up discussions, <laughs> questions that are likely, or do we feel like we're going to be in a position by then to know enough that we can just make our own judgment? And I, one other thing I'm going to just throw out there, just to irritate people is that uh, even though we voted last night to schedule an extra meeting doesn't mean we have to use it and um, seems to me that by the time we go through the public hearing process and two prior rounds of discussion there's going to be a lot of familiarity with the budget and if we encourage the council to attend the public forum uh, it strikes me that the actual final vote may not be that, there may not be that many questions left and you may be able to go ahead and do it on the earlier date and not use the additional meeting date because I'm not sure that there'll be questions left at that point. I, I think we make that call as we get closer. I agree. I just think that we shouldn't um, feel like we're bound to have that use that yep. 29th date. I think you, that's a uh, judgment call for the president and who's part of this committee and this committee to have. Yes. It does speak to that we, um, for that series of meetings, do you want those to be meetings of the whole? or just the public hearing be a meeting of the whole? No, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because one of the suggestions last night um, was that we call them all as, or we select which ones, um, but it may be that we want to start with the only April 23rd. That's the one where we're doing the actuary in debt. So, what so about the budgets? 
the only caution is that you have to get a quorum then of the council, not just the finance committee to operate. If we call a committee of the whole and the council doesn't show, not, show up enough to call a meeting, do we need to, if we've also called a FinCom meeting, can't we just go ahead with the FinCom meeting? I hope so. I don't know the answer for sure. I, I don't know if you can si schedule simultaneous meeting. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. You're saying, so you're saying council or default to finance committee. Is right. I do. Okay. So it has to be posted as both. How did Northampton do it? They posted, they posted as both. Um, and when I've been looking through how some of the other towns do it, they often post as both where they know that, you know, if it was another town, seven is a quorum, they're expecting seven counselors to come up, so they just post it as both. Although it is the key topic. So I read an um, attorney general opinion on this, and they said that if it's clear the discussion is about what the committee is talking about, but counselors can be there having announced that they will be there, um, it's perfectly fine to have seven, eight, you know, however, however many show up, but it has to be posted as both. Right. Right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, is there a downside to doing that? We should, then I suggest that we do it so it saves a whole line of inquiry. So when do you want to start that? So I'll jump in. I, I think you'd want to do it on the <coughs> April 2nd, which is the public hearing on the school budget. And then during your May meetings, uh, the, when, you have, when you go to two a week during May meetings. You don't think we should do the 23rd as well? of April? Probably yes, because those were, we actually did announce those to the um, council as a whole. So. So I've got April 2nd, April 23rd, May 7th, May 9th, May 14th, May 16th, May 21st and yes. May 23rd. Uh, well, that's when the committee is going to actually discuss the budget, which is not informational. Um, it's not like, I think that what was uh, the reason that uh, Councillor Brewer brought it up is that uh, if we're expecting for example, on the 9th, that the Department of Public Works staff um, will be present to explain how the budget works in their side. That, that's something that uh, previously would have been presented twice, once at the Finance Committee and once at the um, town meeting. And because there's not going to be an equivalent presentation at town meeting, that that's the only time that counselors could possibly attend something. I think that's what she was thinking. So I would. So we stop. So we stop with the 21st. I would. Unless we start yeah. seeing a groundswell <coughs> and people keep we can see to we, come we can back. see if we get a request from the. Um, Council to be more present, then we can do it for the, we can add that date. Okay. So I think that, um, is everybody comfortable with that discussion of schedule? Because I think that we've, because we've been talking about schedules, so we've been talking a little bit also when we talked about the FI 19 questions on budget information materials and discussion of committee learning needs. I just want to make sure that on that second one that we get back to it to see if there's anything we're missing other than the
presentations that have previously been described during this meeting. Can I also ask that we just one more time, um, and then I'll edit the email back to Superintendent Morris, and that is that on March 26th for the regional school budget, if it's self-explanatory, there doesn't need to be anybody there? Yes? I think we're saying Mr. Mangano, if he's available, would be there. Okay. Um, and for the um, April 2nd, definitely need to have someone there, superintendent? I think that's the intent. My understanding is that when, is he would make a presentation uh, in public about the budget. Okay. I think that's right. And then uh, the question is whether um, two other, the two other meetings are the ninth, whether the, if there's follow-up questions uh, that come up before we take a vote on who might be there. And, um, but we certainly don't expect um, a large grouping. And then the, the, the last one is uh, when we take the budget vote itself. Um, but I, I think the answer to that is, um, and I probably will incorporate this into my next um, report, written report to the council as a whole, um, emphasizing that the time that's most valuable for them to come is uh, to be there for the public hearing on the, uh, April 2nd. And because there we're not working under the forum rules, they can speak and they can ask questions. So does that sound right? It seems to be agreement nodding around of heads, which is as close as we get to voting on <laughs> anything in this group, but that's okay. So, uh, so April 9th, only if there's questions raised at the hearing? Yes. Okay, and on April 29th, are we expecting a presentation? That's to the full council. Um, Paul, what do you think? So I think the way that worked at town meeting is the finance committee presented to the town meeting. So that would be basically the finance committee saying, we had a hearing on this, we considered it, here's our recommendation to you, the council. You might need someone from the school department to answer questions, but typically it was the finance committee who introduced the items to the town meeting, which was what your role would be to the council. They're saying, what is your advice? I think Andy would have better. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we're, we're guessing now because this is the first time through the process. Um, but the kinds of questions that would come from the floor of town meeting, there was no other forum that most of those people had to ask those questions. Uh, because we have, and if we encourage people to come on the 9th, we've actually provided that forum already. And, uh, so it may be that it's not necessary. Um, this actually might be an interesting question. If Kathy or I um, just sent an email to uh, Dave Murphy and asked him um, how the school budget presentation happens and how many times do they have the superintendent come, might be interesting to see what he responds to us. So that said, um, getting back to the question that I was uh, raising before, because we've really been sticking with the agenda pretty well, but jumbling things together, which is fine. But um, is there anything else in the way of information material or learning needs that you found um, as members that you think you need more understanding about and would like to ask uh, Sonia to try and see what she can do to, to address. 
Do you think we're beginning to get there? Okay. Then I don't think there's anything else on um, any of the items that have been listed on the agenda. Um, no public to make public comments, and we have no meetings, uh, minutes of prior meetings to approve. Uh, was there anything else that wasn't on the agenda that uh, is not an anticipated item? No, I'm going to save it for the 12th. Okay. Um, so just going, um, our next meeting we know is the, uh, a primary purpose of the meeting will be to get back into the capital questions and information that will help us to understand the uh, various options on, in, in consequences of the request to support the SOI statement of interest for the MSBA. Uh, and uh, I'll talk with Sonia about whether we want to have um, one portion or two portions of the um, operating budget, but you won't be here, right, at the next meeting? Yeah, so we may not want to hold that anyway. And I am sending Andy an email asking the Finance Committee to review our charge. Yeah, oh, that is an unanticipated item. You are correct, and I, but we don't need to discuss it. I just need to put you, uh, tell you about it is that uh, the request, as I understand it, is that we review our committee charge now that we've begun to delve into actually operating as a committee and see if there's anything that we might recommend back to the council to consider regarding the charge uh, and to the governance committee. So, you know, one topic that was raised at the last town council meeting, so it's in addition to this within 50, 48 hours, is the non-resident members of the council, and the rules committee will be discussing that this afternoon and hopefully come back with a recommendation on how that might be done. So to the extent um, one of the issues that was raised when that discussion happened, and actually Andy raised it on whether we might want to consider a longer than one year term for the non-residents so that they can come on and stay with the committee, and that would require an amendment of the charge if we did that. You know, so, uh, right. so I mean, that just, that, that one item would, so it would be on the, when we review the charge, we're also talking about that piece of it. Andy, do you want do you want to just take take this as a unanticipated within twenty four hour forty eight hours and have it now? Because there's actually a couple two other things that I want considered um, here. I guess uh, what we should what I would suggest is that we list we go ahead and list the items as was just done and talking about terms for the uh, non council members or citizen <laughs> members. If there are other things we want to put on the list, we should go ahead and do that, and then we'll put it actually as an agenda item for next time. Okay. So the, here are the other items. One is two-year terms. Another one is that they be appointed effective July 1st, 2019. And the third one is that the finance <laughs> committee chair or his designee from the finance committee do the interview process as being developed by the Outreach Communication and Appointments Committee. <coughs> and that the recommendation then for the residents be forwarded by the Finance <coughs> Committee to the full council for approval. So, Lynn, you're suggesting those are issues to be discussed next time. Do you want the Rules Committee also to focus on those? We're meeting in about an hour and a half, you know, yeah, today. I, I'm underst I understand you are, and I was actually planning to come to your okay. meeting for about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So, you, uh, yeah, I mean, 
The problem that I'm having in thinking about this is that if we ended up with citizen members who were um, very familiar with the budget and um, they would, for example, somebody who served on the prior finance committee, they'd be able to get up to speed really quickly. If they we're talking about people who are interested in the budget, have really good sense about financial matters, but have had not not had that kind of experience, to drop them in on the process um, late is going to complicate our lives, not make our lives more informed and better. And um, it's very difficult to give feedback on uh, how to do it with that because that's sort of the vagueness that's out there. We can't, we don't want to make policy around who we hope is there. So I don't know what to say. My other, my other logic for suggesting the two-year terms is that under normal circumstances, that group of four people would then um, be holdovers to the next elected council. So they actually bring with them some useful memory that you know, may not be there among the councils, councilors who return. And, uh, my question is, when do, you <clears throat> when do you think new members could come on where it would work? Where's a natural breaking point, dividing line? I think what was just proposed that we consider is July 1st, so. Well, I, heard, I heard that, but then Andy said he still had a problem with them coming up to speed. So I'm wanting to know when he well, thinks what is the ideal time well, for new members said. to come on? It, it, July 1st obviously would, would work well because then people will be on the committee sort of in its more quiet period of the year and then build up the speed as we develop the budget process and we can, and so we'll have plenty of time to work with somebody who's unfamiliar. Um, if it was somebody who had previously served on the old finance committee, that's not necessary, but as we said, we can't build life around the possibility that one of them might, or two of them might fall into that category. So we're kind of stuck um, where we are. But just think about how much you've been learning already and it, what's gonna be the effect of dropping people into the process and they're going to have a lot of the questions and start us all over again, going back and working with that. That's, I think, what the challenge we're facing is. I think Andy's comment was if we brought them on now, it would be a challenge. Because oh, okay. yeah, July 1st is the beginning of the next year, right. you know, so, so I just, when we consider this, I'm, I think two years is reasonable and we can talk about it. I even thought three years might be with staggered terms for the same reason, Lynn, that more continuity, building up knowledge will serve the town well. Um, so we can just, when we convene to talk about it, it, it was the term that used to be for the finance committee and I don't think everyone went off at the same time, but it's, I think it's worth at least thinking of, about Andy, I was actually going to ask that question. What was the, the three years but staggered? There were three years and staggered, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we do, in the, uh, when your committee meets later today, I mean, one of those things that you have to consider is that it's likely that some members of a council will run for re-election when councils come up for re-election and some won't and that there will be some continuity but you can't guarantee that there won't be an entire turnover in council either because of decisions of councillors or decisions of voters. Um, and those are the kinds of difficult issues that we're gonna have on lots of things what kind of institutional memory will be forward. And I guess that uh, Alyssa and I have been thinking about that a lot because we've been carrying institutional memory from the select board um, and kind of realize the value of it and realize the value that all of you are bringing to, the, to this group. 
because you don't, you're asking good questions and don't get stuck in the past. So, anything else we need to talk about now? If not, I'll hear a suggestion of adjournment. Okay. Move, we adjourn. Okay. We are adjourned at uh, 325.